All right, so this is part two kicking off with B-Ball Jones podcast. If you missed part one, we gave our uh, conference finals review where we talked about the Suns doing their things against the Clippers, and they got their uh, Western Conference Championship over with. They won, got to the finals. My guy CP3 doing his thing, finally getting to the finals. Covered the Eastern Conference finals. Uh, Chris, not Chris Ball. Well, Giannis Antetokounmpo, the Greek freak. Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday did their thing and they uh, advanced to the next round, going to the finals. Salute to them for being the Hawks in seven. Um, now they're going head to head, so we're going to give our thoughts and give a, a finals preview, how we think it's going to go, our thoughts on it, the matchups and everything. So uh, I'll give it over to my co host right now and see where your minds are, how you feel about the matchup. Not going to lie, the matchups are like, they're pretty good. Like it's even. And I like that about them, honestly, about this, about these two teams. But the main thing is if Giannis has the combo can come back and be healthy. That's the main thing. And so if he misses game one, that's probably fine. They can might they might can bounce back. If he comes back game two or three and plays like this, they have a great chance to win it. But <clears throat> if Giannis is healthy, I say this series goes seven. Cause you this thing, you got Drew and Chris Paul, Drew, uh Defensive stalwart, you know, and Chris is like a, a facilitator of a, a, a floor general. So I don't know if they'll put Drew on Chris or they put him on Devin Booker. So, I mean, we'll see what they decide to do with that. But you got Drew and Chris Paul. For right now, we'll say Drew versus Chris Paul. So I like that matchup. Then you got Chris Middleton and Devin Booker. You can, you know, decide who you think is better between the two. A lot of people probably say Devin Booker. So, but uh, I like that two scores against each other. And then we got uh, what well, we would have Giannis versus uh, DeAndre Aiden. Because I'm sure they'll probably put DeAndre Aiden on Giannis. Or probably maybe Jay Crowder, but I would go ahead and go big and put DeAndre Aiden on him. That's a man right there. And so we don't know what they'll do with that. But uh, with Giannis out, they really. Uh, they can put Jay Crowder on Connaughton, which is just going to be a regular matchup. Jay got good defense. Connaughton is a little bit of a slasher. So we'll see how, how that matches up. But then we got Brooke Lopez versus DeAndre Aiden as long as Giannis is out. And DeAndre Aiden has been killing. And Brooke just came off a real good game against the Hawks. So I feel like these are very even teams. So we'll see how it plays out. But if Giannis can come back and be healthy – I see this series going seven just off those matchups. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, like the Giannis injury, that's that's a very questionable thing, man, because I remember we, we talked about uh, Trey Young. Uh, he came back for game six. We were like, man, Trey Young came back, so it's going to go seven with the Hawks. Um, Lo and behold, the Bucks pulled it out. You know, I was kind of thinking if Giannis doesn't come back and Trey's able to come back and look somewhat like himself, I thought the I thought the Hawks were going to come out the uh, East because I didn't think they were going. I, I, once again, I didn't trust Chris Middleton. I didn't think he was going to be able to pull it through for another game or two games and be the score that they needed. Um, I felt like Drew was going to be. Tax trying to defend Red Velvet and Trey Young like that the whole series and the whole game to be a assistant bucket like that for the Bucks. So it's just because Chris Middleton is really the X factor in this whole thing, depending on how Giannis healthy is. So if Giannis is not able to come back for – it's like he missed the first two games, then I put everything on Chris. Because he is supposed to be number two. When number one goes out, number two steps up, and he's become, he becomes number one. So now it's like, okay, what are you going to do, Chris? Are you going to give us 30 points again? Are you going to lead us to at least a fighting chance? Or do we have to go to Brooke Lopez and Drew Holiday, and, which you shouldn't have to do? It should be on the, the new number one guy. So honestly, man, it really depends on Chris. Like, Chris is the real X factor, man, because – if he shows up and does what he can do, now you have a series. Now you have it. I agree. It'll, it'll go seven games. And if they're able to go big, like they can go, like Drew is 6'4", six, 6'5". Six, 
solid. Like he's defending wings with comfort. Like Drew is a, is a built six foot. He's strong. Like that's a big boy right there. Then you got Chris Middleton coming in at like six seven, six eight. You got um Giannis at seven one, Brooke at seven one, and who else? Who else? Who else? Who else? Oh, PJ Tucker at six five. And he's strongest, strongest, strong can get. So it's like if they want to go big against them, they can. Aiden is the only real big that they have, and he's not gonna play the whole game. So when he goes out, you got Chris Paul at six foot, six one on a good day. Booker is six five. Crowd at six seven, six eight. Aiden at seven one, and pretty much everybody else besides, uh, yeah, pretty much everybody else they got on the roster for real, for real is not that big besides uh, Dario. He doesn't play that much consistently, so it's like, yeah, we'll see. But I think that matchups will make this thing. Um, he said, Drew, if I were the books, I'd put Drew on Booker. Because, yeah, he, he's the guy. Like, that's the number one option, hands down. I love Chris, but this is Booker's team. Like, that's that's the way. Like, I think they go as far as Booker can really take them. Like, will Chris Paul close the games and he managed certain things? Yes. But it's Booker's team. I'll put the ball in Booker's hands to carry us. Like, he should be the number one option. He should be the guy that is scoring the most points. He should be getting the most touches. Hands down. But Chris Paul is going to manage the game, manage the teams. And if Booker can't, because I don't think Chris Paul is going to want to score that much. No. So exactly. Like nobody expects Chris Paul to say, I'm going out for 30 every night. That's not what he does. As long as you can cap off Booker's numbers and you start for him and get him frustrated, I feel like the team is going to be capped at that point. Because Chris Paul's not trying to go for 30 every night. He could. He got a Steve Nash thing where if he decided to go for 30, he could, but he's not going to. Which would add to his assist, but that's a whole other conversation for the day. So by letting Chris Paul do his thing and say, you can score your 20 points, that's cool. If you 10 assists, that's cool. You can get eight and going a little bit, but you're not going to close this game or close the series out, but let the book get off. So that's what I do. Um, Really try to cap off Booker and like limit him and what he's able to do offensively. And then make him defend on the other end. I'll get a matchup to where Booker is guarding um Chris Middleton instead of PJ Tucker standing in the corner. Um I would look at making sure Chris Paul is I'm testing his, his body out, man. You, you got hurt, I'm testing you out. You're gonna have to run this game and make sure you, your foot, ankle, knee, hips. Back, show. I make sure everything healthy. I'm, I'm get because Drew, Drew is a like I said, that man is six four, six five. That, that weight room is is effective for him. So I'm testing that body. I'm posting you up. I'm seeing how strong you are. I'm seeing how healthy you are. Damn, make you run through screens, all that stuff. I'm finna put your body to work, Chris. I'm seeing how healthy you are. That's just basketball. I love Chris. That's my dude. But basketball wise, kick in. I'm testing your body out. That's just how I go. So, um. We'll see, man. It's really con- I really, I don't want to give my too much prediction because I really don't know. Uh, Got to see how game one goes. Got to see how long Giannis is out. But I think it can go seven. But depends on Giannis and Chris, man. So we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Just the main thing. But Chris did just come off a big game against the Clippers where he dropped 40. So I'm thinking he's pretty healthy at this moment. But we'll see, though. Like you said, if I, if I don't know. I think I, I think I live with making Chris try to be me, honestly. Like D Book, I feel like D Book ain't got no problem going for 30 every night. Exactly. But Chris going for 30 every night. I, I think I live making him do that. If I if I'm trying to decide who gonna who the guard heaviest, I I I live with making Chris get them 30 every night. Rather than letting D Book get 30 and let DeAndre Aiden get 25 and Chris get 18 and 12 assists. Like, nah, I'm not, I'm not letting the whole team eat. Yeah. Somebody else gonna have to do the bulk of the scoring. Because I'm trying to take D Book out the game. So, like you said, they probably put Drew on him. And then Chris make something happen. That's how I feel, at least. Yeah. Now I get that two or three games. I, I get that two games. And if it's not working out, then you know, make adjustments. But 
at this point, at starting out, I think we try to make Chris beat us. Like, and I say us because you know, beyond just my boy, and I wanted to get the first ring. Yeah. Uh, I want Chris to get one too. So I ain't gonna be too upset if they lose, like I said, because I, I would love Chris, for Chris to get a ring. Yeah, but as of right now, I gotta go for the bus because that's my boy. So I'm making Chris beat us first game one. I'm testing that out, like you said. Like, hey, Chris, how healthy you are? How you feeling? Yeah, you do you feel old? You feel you feel good when you play? Because you will need a lot of energy for this one. Yeah, you gonna have to get on. And campaign has been playing pretty big too, so that might not be the best idea when campaign come in. But I don't know. I ain't the coach, so but at, at this point, I say make Chris beat us. But Cam was hurt too. He was banged up the last series because he didn't play the last mm-hmm. game or two games. So it just really depends. Like this year is so weird, man. Like usually like, you can give a feel for what's going to happen because you've seen what happened the past series, but injuries have been killing this whole season. Like there's really nothing you can really concrete rely on and concretely. Like this, you got to throw all the stats out the window. Like I feel like every game is almost like a game seven because game seven, all the stats don't matter. Who was hot and who was cold doesn't matter. Whatever happened, game one through six, almost irrelevant now because it's zero zero. It's one game now. And I feel like every game you have to reset what happened because you thought one way about the Bucks, boom, Giannis went down. You thought one way about the Hawks, boom, Trey went down. You thought one way about the Lakers, LeBron went down, AD went down, Kawhi went down. It's like every single time somebody's going down. So you can't really rely on anything anymore at this point, at this season, because everything is so inconsistent and so unstable. So, like, I just, I just don't know, man. Like, but I think what you – like, I agree completely with what you're saying. Like, I'm really finna cap off book. Like, if he, if he goes off, that's a loss for us. Because this thing about people don't realize, like, for – a pass first point guard like Chris Paul, if he's scoring, that means he's not passing the ball. If he's not passing the ball and getting everybody involved, everybody else is not scoring. You only have him, Booker, and Cameron Payne off the top of my head that can give you buckets by themselves. Like here, get go, go create, give me a bucket. Those are only three guys you can really count on consistently to go do that with. You need Chris Paul to get everybody else set up. So if Chris Paul is scoring, that means somebody else just got one less touch. Okay, he scored again. Somebody else didn't get the ball again. So you, by you forcing Chris Paul to be a scorer now, he goes out for 40 points. Cool. Chris Paul got 40. Let's say Booker has a bad night because Drew doing his thing. He's limiting him. Booker only has 15. So that's 65 points for them to – you're looking to have maybe another 30 points for the rest of the team just because they're not getting touch like they used to get. So that's 95 points. The Bucs are scoring easily over 110 probably every game. So if they're not able to get everybody involved and the Bucs are rolling that night, I told you that game three or game four against the Hawks when everybody's really doing their thing, and that's the Bucs that I was scared of seeing for so long, if that Bucs is out, are able to show up, it's a, that's, that's not even going seven. That's going probably five. If Giannis can come back and do his thing, and that's the game that that's the series we get from them. Where Giannis is doing his thing, like not afraid of the mid post. Like, like I saw one play where he drove in, made it in and out. He turned, started going to his post game, and made a move and finish. Next came, I mean, next play down, Chris Middleton creates and gets his bucket. Next play down, Giannis created again, did a move, kicked it out to somebody in the corner, knocked it down three. That's what I was scared of seeing all these years. But because it never fully came around like it needed to, I was never scared of it. I was never a believer in him because that wasn't consistent. But if that is able to show up, that's going five or six. Easy. Like, I don't see the Bucks. I mean, I don't see the uh, Suns having enough firepower to match that. So, we'll see, man. But that's the thing, though. Like you said, the Bucks are big. They're mm-hmm. a big team. So, they got big. Like, they got Brooke. They got Giannis. They got – um. What's my boy, Bobby Fortis? They got shoes. The Nazis, really, even though he don't play much, yeah. they're just big. They got height and, and strength. Mm-hmm. And so that's something I feel like the um, the Suns have been feasting on with DeAndre Ayton. I feel like DeAndre Ayton has been the biggest player on every team they played against, like the strongest, at least I'd say. Yeah. Because like, even against the Lakers, Aiden, once AD went down, because Aiden was giving AD the business for real. Like, we just being honest. And, you know, AD was obviously, you know, just coming off injury. And then he got re-injured. 
And so Aiden was the biggest player on the court. And then they played the, the uh, Nuggets. And uh, I guess they got Jokic guarding on it. Jokic ain't known for his defense. I don't think people talk about that a lot just because of how much he ran on the offensive end. But my boy is not, you know, if you got a big that's going to try to score, he going to get off. Yes. And my boy worried about taking his ball out and, and, and pushing the break after the ball go through the net. Which I, I, I ain't trying to knock my boy. He's still a great player, obviously. But he's just not a defensive player. Then they play the Clippers, and the Clippers are small. Like, just being real, they're a small team, and Aiden feasted on that. Like, they was even giving the boy, my boy the ball in the post, like, on the block. And I was not seeing that coming, for real. For, I, well, I wasn't expecting Aiden to really get off the way he did the entire playoffs. But in hindsight, he was the biggest player that on the court almost all the time, whatever he was on. And so he did what he was supposed to do. And so now at this point, he's going to be going against Brook Lopez, who ain't no small boy. If Giannis come back, he ain't no little boy, obviously. You got Bobby Porter's who a strong dude. It's just – it's going to be tough on that inside. And I don't yeah. think they face no inside presence like those guys yet. So we'll see how they play against that. And if Giannis come back, that'll just add to that. But they still be even without Giannis. Like, Brooke got 33 points in game six yesterday. And um, he didn't take no threes. Or he didn't make no threes, I mean. And he had 33 points, all, like, layups and dunks. So – that just show you like what they can do on the inside. So, yeah. bro, and that was against the uh, Hawks who had Clint Capella, which is a true big. So, I mean, I, other than him, they're not very big, but Clint is big, and he guarding Brooke, and Brooke got thirty three. So, I don't know. It's gonna be tough. That's why I say it's gonna be a great matchup. But I don't see the the Bucks doing that like. Dominating them like that consistently. They never have more than two games like that in a row where they shoot the field off the ball and Giannis can get going and Chris is going and Drew is going. They never have more than like two of those games. Yeah. So, but that's why I say it's probably going to go to seven. But let, let's let Chris, if we just try to make make Chris beat us instead of letting D Book go crazy. And the side, I feel like the size will take care of Aiden in itself. And then, you know, I think they got a good shot to win it. As long as Giannis come back and plays, I feel like they got a great shot to win. It might even be six, but I give it seven. Yeah, so uh, to buck the big up the signs um, and kind of think, bring things on their perspective, I think if they're able to speed the game up, and because like I said, they're playing smaller ball. And I think this is the oxymoron about the Suns is that when Chris Paul went down early in the series and he wasn't playing the first two games, Book was like really showing his butt off. Like he went off for that 40 point triple double, and everybody's running gun. He was facilitating everything, right? And most times with young teams, you want to go ahead and run because those young legs like to use their athleticism, use their length, and get out of run. They can score the ball pretty well, they can shoot the ball pretty well. So if they're able to run and get out and do what they want to do, they're good. Now, the oxymoron comes in with Christopher Paul. That man will not run for nothing. He's trying to slow the ball down, slow it down, slow it down a little bit more, slow it down some more, especially in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. He's going to slow you down, get in the half court, get everybody in the exact spot they need to be. He's playing chess every single play. Get everybody in the exact exact right spot to get the exact matchup that you need to have to make sure we get the most efficient shot as possible. He'd rather have 10 great shots rather than 20 or 30 good shots, which sometimes can be your kryptonite. Because we have somebody like Booker, you got to let him cook. You know what I mean? Like somebody like Aiden, he's very young. So you got to let him cook a little bit too. You, get, you, have to, you have to have some of those bad shots. You know what I mean? Like, yes, it's the finals, yes, it's the playoffs, and yes, they're young, you want them to grow. But you have to let guys like that grow through their scoring, growing pains. So you like you almost babying them to a point where they're not able to fully grow like they need to. Don't get me wrong, like I know Chris Paul's a great leader and everything. He's able to teach those guys a lot more. He's able to help them out. Uh it's like a big brother giving wisdom to his little brother. Like I went through all this stuff to put you on game so you don't have to go through it too. But at the same time, the best experience sometimes is you just go ahead and get your head but sometimes. Like you need that. And with Booker being the level of talent that he is. And we see him going to be 
Sometimes Chris Bob has to sit down and be like, yo, let you do your thing. You gonna run? All right, cool, give you the ball and let you go run. So it's like Chris Paul, I remember somebody tweeted like, uh, Chris Paul is the worst thing that happened to the Suns this series because that's the game that when Chris Paul came back, that's the game they lost. Mm-hmm. They won the first two and they lost that one when Chris Paul came back. They was like, yo, Chris Paul need to go back home and make TikTok with his kids. And I was like, yo, y'all being disrespectful even though that's low-key true. Because Chris yeah. Paul, y'all wild, man. So it's like, but I'm, I'm he slowed the game down, man. That's, that's, that's the kryptonite to him as an individual. Him and Rondo, LeBron, sometimes they micromanage too much rather than just let the game flow sometimes. But that's that's and they the, got them young bucks too, so they can really run all day. That's what I'm saying. So it's like you kind of have to let them run. Like by the same time, that's the difference in the playoffs, man. That running stuff, that's the thing about the Bucks too. Like that running stuff is cool, but you need a bucket now. So how do you get a bucket? Can't worry about the fast pace up and down stuff all the time. Cause it's the playoffs. Trying to get the best shot possible. So you don't want to limit what the Suns are great at, which is running and gun. Like you don't want to sit set up against uh Drew Holiday six five. Uh, P.J. Tucker, 6'4", 6'5", Chris Middleton, 6'7", Giannis, uh, his brother, and Brooke, Bobby Portis. You don't want to set up against that defense every single play. You don't want to try to manipulate the defense every single play if you're Chris Paul. Sometimes when you go ahead and get those easy buckets, you're going to get another easy 10 to 15 fast break points just because you're running. So it's like you don't want to miss out on those extra little points you can get because you're trying to micromanage each in each individual play. So if the Suns are able to take advantage of that when they got it and they're able to just push it and go and just let them run, let Book get a couple easy buckets and not have to worry about uh, Drew Holiday or P.J. Tucker this play, and I can just go get a fast break against stinking uh, uh, not Deep Vincenzo, but whoever come off the bench for the Bucks, Like, I can't think about it. But, you know, it's an easy matchup to say no Drew Holiday and no P.J. Tucker this play. Oh, let me go score. Easy. I don't have to worry about Brooke Lopez and Bobby Portis and Giannis on the backside because it's a fast break. So you letting guys like that get involved now to where, okay, I see the ball go through the rim a couple of times. I got a couple of easy layups. Now, now half court comes into play now. I feel good because I got six points just off of fast breaks now. I went and got an end when I got fouled. Now I hit the free throw line. That's three points right there. So now I got nine. I have nine points. I'm feeling great. We haven't even gotten in the half court yet. So now Chris Paul comes in, slow the game down. You give me my spot. Now I feel good to get that shot off now. So now I'm able to score a little bit more confidently and more at ease because I already got nine points on the board just off of fast breaks. So, like, Chris Paul is able to manage that well and let the young bucks run how they need to run. I, I can't say young bucks right now, but the young players run how they need to run right now against that defense and not let them set up. That's going to be the, the tricky part for them. So. Because I'm not saying the Bucs have a stellar lockdown defense, no offense, but they're not, like, just a cakewalk defense either. Like, you got big, strong boys on the other side, and you got at least three or four guys that's a full 6'11", 7'1". So it's like that's tough to set up against on the offensive end. So if, if Chris Paul is able to, to limit that oxymoron of their offense and, like, not cap off the young players being able to run, and try to, you know, micromanage every single play, we'll see how that goes. But I think the Suns are able to run. That, that's going to be a big benefit for them and get the easiest buckets possible because, like I said, if Drew's able to lock up Booker and Chris Paul's forcing a score, where are you getting that buckets from? So it's like that fast break going to be even more important in that situation. So we'll see how that goes, man. But I think the Suns do have a shot at they're able to lock in on that and see how the defense goes. But we'll see how the Suns look, man. Yeah, man, it's like we said last episode, it come down to the healthiest team at this point. And the Suns have been the healthiest team in the league. So they have that advantage with uh would they have that advantage with them if they just lock in on, on those things you, you mentioned. And um I feel like they win if they don't play hero ball. And that's the main thing Chris is good with. And so like and I do think they need to push the pace with campaign good for that pushing the pace. Yeah, and Chris is good for you know selling everything down, running the offense, which ain't always a bad thing. But it's a time and place for it, you know. So I just like like you said, I, I just hope they don't get too locked in on one of the other because that's yeah. what not what got them here. So yeah. 
if they if they can find a good mix, and then that's called on coach uh, Monty Williams, which is congratulations to him. Uh, he in the finals. Yep, yep. Um, black coach. I'm proud of that black head oh, coach yeah. in the finals. And so if they just you know find a good mix for that. Hey, whether that means play Cam and Chris together or what, I don't know. But if they find a good mix for it, I think they're good. And without, especially without Giannis, I, without Giannis, I think they might win in six. If, if Giannis was to like just not come back, they'll probably win in six. But either, even so, they give themselves a great chance to win. If they do. Yeah, so um, let's go ahead and get a little predictions going, man. So let's say Giannis is able to come back game two. How you see the uh, final shaping out? Giannis comes back game two. I think the Suns win game one. And then um, the Suns have home court advantage, correct? Because they were second in the, in the West. Yep. Yeah. And the Bucks was third in the East, I want to say. So, yeah, Suns got home court advantage. I think Suns win game one by double digits. Not going to lie. Mm. Then game, let's say Giannis come back game two. I think the Suns probably win that game too. Like I think they probably win that one. We're close, win that one close. Mm-hmm. I think the Bucks go home, and then uh, they'll shape up. Then Giannis would have got his legs on them a little bit, and they even the series at two. And then I ain't gonna predict the rest of the games, but I think I think it goes seven. <clears throat> and if, let's just assume Giannis plays like himself. I gotta. I'm gonna go Bucks in seven. Not just because that's my boy, but I feel like the size of the Bucs is going to bother DeAndre Ayton. Like I said, he's been the biggest player on the floor most of this playoff. So I think the size of, of the Bucs is going to bother them. I think um, I think there's a more clear way to beat the Suns than there is a clear way to beat the Bucs at this point. Because I feel like the Bucs have so many weapons, <clears throat> but they're inconsistent weapons. So, like, Chris is inconsistent. Drew not going to always give you 25-30. Um, the Brook not always going to give you 25, 30. Like, they have an inconsistent team, not mostly because they depend, the, depend so much on shooting. But their defense is there night in and night out. Drew going to always guard. P.J. Tucker going to always guard. They always going to have Brook and Giannis on the inside. And so they, their defense is going to be there night in and night out. And I don't think the Suns – I think the Suns will, will struggle with that a little bit. So unless Book go crazy or shoot Chris go crazy, I think the Bucs can pull it out of seven, as long as Giannis come back, like you said. But what about you? What you think? Uh, I I think the exact reason that you said that you're not sure about the Bucs is the reason why I think they're going to lose. And it plays a big role, but, too. So, with because the Bucs do have overall better weapons, you know, and I don't say better weapons, like, but they like the Bucs, you have a clear defined role of what you're going to get from the Bucs. But because they're so inconsistent, you're not sure game in, game out what you're going to get is why I think they're going to lose, especially if Giannis is not able to come back and, like, be the centerpiece to the whole offense or, and defense like they need to be. And so because of that, you know – you I won't say you know, but you're pretty, you're pretty darn sure what you're going to get from the Suns. Book can give you 25 to 35 a night. Chris Paul can give you anywhere from 20 to 35 a night, even 40 if you really wanted to. And you know you're going to get him to manage the game very well. You know you're going to get very limited turnovers. You're going to get really great shots. And you know that their offense can be very well on point. So I think it's going to come down to their offense versus the Bucks' defense of which style and which personality is going to outdo the other one. And because they have the home court advantage and they know what it's like to, to win without Chris Paul, that's going to give them an extra advantage versus the Bucks right now, and because the Bucks are so inconsistent, and you like you like you, nobody knows what you're going to get from the Bucks, which is their kryptonite. You nobody can guarantee. Oh, I know LeBron went down, so eighty going to step up and he's going to give me thirty tonight. I'm going to need him to give me this and that. Like you, you, no one can say what Chris Mills is going to give you because Giannis went out, and because from there down it's so unstable, I can't guarantee the Bucks will win. So I, I'll go Suns without a healthy Giannis. I'll say the Suns get two double-digit wins, and they win in six. I think the game one will probably go eight to 12 points, maybe 15 points win. If Giannis come back game two, 
and he's somewhat like himself. I see the Bucks, I mean, the Suns winning very close, maybe a game winner or something like that to where it's like a four or five, a four or five point win. Um, and it goes back and forth a little bit, but the Suns winning six. I don't know if I see the Bucks winning if Giannis come back and he's himself. That's the only way I see them win. Because that's going to set everything back in place. You know you're going to get your 30 to 40 points from him. So, with that being the only guarantee that you have in the defense, if Giannis can come back and look like himself, I give the Bucks seven. But if, because there's so many question marks around the Bucks and so much instability with the Bucks, I go Suns and seven, man. Not just because I'm a Chris Paul fan, but because I really, I can't tell you, you know, break down anything that the Bucks can guarantee to give you because they're going. They're, the game is shooting, and you know, especially playoff times, shots don't fall. You gotta have a backup. You gotta have a plan B. The plan B should be go inside, but Bud's not the best coach with adjustments. So his coaching is also a big kryptonite. So we'll see, man. I think this is my prediction: is Suns and six for sure, but. I don't know. The Bucks are just a big question mark. So I got signs and six. I, I, I understand that definitely. That's just me. That's just me speaking. Uh, assuming that Giannis can come back and be himself, like you said. Let's just, if Giannis is not himself, signs and six. Just being real, they got too many weapons. They're consistent for the most part. I think the only time D. Book was inconsistent when he had to wear that mask for his nose when he hurt his nose. So, and Chris not always gonna give you, you know, twenty five, thirty. So, and DeAndre Aiden might struggle with their size. But at the end of the day, if Giannis don't come back and be himself, I still say Suns and six. And if he don't come back at all, it might be fine. At least if he come back and not himself, he can he still draw attention from the defense. But Suns and six, like you said, if Giannis cannot come back and play like himself, if Giannis comes back and he's the Greek freak, then Bucks and seven. Got to roll him a black. Got to. All right, so just real quickly, man, uh, I kind of want to get in that legacy talk. So if Giannis wins a ring, what does that do for him, his legacy, and, you know, pretty much the bus moving forward? Brian, he top five from now on, and I ain't going to say it no more. <laughs> he top five. And I ain't saying top five all the time, obviously, but top five in the league. And let's just remember now, Let's just remember, James Harden, the same one that was like, uh, I wish I could just run and dunk and be good. That takes no skill. I actually have to learn how to play basketball. Remember that? Oh, yeah. Guess who at home? <laughs> and guess who sent him there? The boy that's just running and dunking. So I ain't trying to hear that no more. Top five. You can go from KD, Braun, Steph, whatever. I don't care the order. But top five, you go ahead. What, what you think? Top five, cause top that that five. I, I got to man. Like I I I I've been killing you about him for so long, man. So yeah. for him to finally get that ring, he's, he's top five. So, um, cause for me, it's you know Steph, LeBron, KD, and Kawhi. That's my top four. However you want to maneuver them around, we can't. That's a whole other conversation we can have. But those are top four. LeBron. KD, Kawhi, and Steph. Those are top four. No debate. With Giannis being the only other guy in that tier with the ring, he solidified the next spot. Because everybody else, like Kyrie's the only other guy in that conversation who has a ring, but he's not in that – he's not in he's that not conversation. MVP level. Yeah, he's not. All the other guys have MVPs. Kawhi – I mean, not Kawhi. Giannis is the only guy with other MVPs. And he has a ring now. Top five. Top five from now on. I ain't going to mm-hmm. say it no more. <laughs> so that's that's where I stand with that. Uh, if he loses, do you think the Bucks blow it up? No, nah, because he hurt. So that's grounds to run it back, in my opinion. We have made it to the finals. And I and this team is – I would say this team the best they've had since Giannis has been there. With Drew and P.J. Tucker and Brooke Lopez. I think those guys, this is the best surrounding cast he's ever had. So I don't think they blow it up. If, if he didn't got hurt, they have an excuse, especially if Chris does this. But let me say, if Chris does this right now, Chris getting in the finals later, then, you know, you consider that. 
But other than that, I think they're running back because they played the hill. They played some healthy teams. It ain't like they was like the Suns who've been playing some some injury riddled teams up to this point. Everybody they played been pretty healthy, minus Miami who didn't have Victor Oladipo, and then they played Atlanta <laughs> and, then and the I Nets. The Nets who lost their. They next still team. had James Harden and Kevin Durant on that court. I ain't really trying to hear that. Come on, bro. We know better. Come on, man. You 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 talking about Giannis Antetokounmpo versus KD? And you a team, versus Chris a Chris. team that's built top heavy loses two of the three guys, and the second guy's halfway hard. Come on, bro. That, that's their fault, bro. That's their fault. The same thing with the Warriors. When forget it, bro. You good? So, like I'm saying, the Bucks played the healthiest teams because they played on um, well I, Miami in the first round, but Victor Oladipo didn't play. But they still had Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, all the same guys they beat them with last year. Bam out of bio. They beat them last year with that team, with those core guys, I should say. So we're not going to sit there and act like they did. Then they play the Nets. Now, I know folks want to say Kyrie ain't played with the Nets. Kyrie wasn't playing. If I told you, you can bet on Kevin Durant and James Harden or Giannis Antetokounmpo and Chris Middleton in the seven game series, you'll take the Nets. Right or wrong? Of course I'm going with the, the Nets. I did. And then I know James wasn't really his self. I know he wasn't like 100%. But now let's, let's, let's take it there again. If I told you, you could have James, you could have Chris Middleton healthy or James Harden on a bad ankle, who you take? Oh, this is hamstring. I just remember this is hamstring. Oh, yeah. On, on a, on a, a pool hamstring, who you take? James. James. So that means Kevin Durant. Now we still now I love Giannis, but we still got to be real. You know, I'm still objective about things. Kevin Durant better than Giannis. Arguably the best player in the world right now. Like that's what we're saying at the moment. Kevin Durant better than Giannis. James Harden still better than Chris Middleton in most people's eyes. Even though, even with the bad hamstring. So, and then you still got Joe Harris who didn't show up, but you have him. Now that you can take that up with Joe. But Joe played. James played. DeAndre Jordan played. Blake Griffin played. And so you had them versus Drew Holiday, Chris Middleton, Giannis Antetokounmpo, P.J. Tucker, and Brooke Lopez. That's the teams, bro. So even without Kyrie, I know most people expected them to win that series. I know they did. They were still probably favored to win in seven. And they had, they had their chance to win. KD hit that uh, buzzer beater. Foot was just too close to the line. Sent it to overtime instead of sending them home. What do you do that for? Because we're going to take it down. <laughs> My boy got them to a clutch post hook in the OT. Chris and Drew took care of most of the scoring, but that's all right. My boy still came in the clutch. PJ still locked up on D. And we wore him down. KD was uh, tired. James was tired. They couldn't pull it out. That's just part of the game. So... And then they play Atlanta. Trey go, go down. Giannis go down. And they pull it out without both superstars. So no superstars playing in the game. It's just uh, surrounded team versus surrounded team. Or surrounded cast versus surrounded cast. And the Bucs pull it out. Chris Middleton and Drew Holiday beat. Um, well, Trey came back for game seven, but he went himself, obviously. But they beat out um, Herder and uh, Cam Reddish and all them. So, as far as I'm concerned, they played the healthiest teams, but at least between them and the Suns, they played the healthiest teams. The Bucks probably had the harder road to me out of the two teams. Play up, play who they played. The Suns had the harder road on paper. Oh, and they rolled to the finals because you know they had to play LeBron and AD, but then AD went down, and LeBron wasn't one really one hundred percent. They did play the MVP and the Cole Jokic, but Jamal Murray wasn't playing. Who was their second best player and their best scorer. And they swept them, so that's still, you know, credit to them. They swept them. And then they played the Clippers without Kawhi Leonard, who was their best player. So they didn't get nobody's full starting lineup or anything's uh, two stars. So uh, in my in my opinion, and they, everybody they played had two stars on the team. None of those guys – no, I mean, none of those teams had both stars play all the games in that series. Neither one of them. Jamal Murray played no games. Kawhi Leonard played no games. AD played two or three. So, they, I, in my opinion, 
Giannis and the Bucks had the harder road to the finals. The Hawks was red hot, and then Trey Young got hurt, but Giannis also got hurt. So they still pull it out with their surrounding cast. And then they played the Nets without Kyrie. I just went through how that was still a difficult series. And they still had to play uh, KD and James Harden. And then, game, and then uh, the first series, they played the, the Heat. And Victor Oladipo was hurt. But they still had the surrounding cast that beat them the previous year. in uh, Tyler Hero, Jamal uh, – not Jamal. Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo, and uh, Duncan Robinson. They still had all those guys. So – in my opinion, the Bucs had the harder road. Everybody had the injuries, but the Bucs have had the harder, the harder road to the finals, in my opinion. You could say that, and I, I, I ain't thought about it like that, but I think about for the Suns' perspective, you look at what the Suns have on their roster. You got Chris Paul, what is he, 35 now? He's not He's not prime. He's not point guard, like point guard, point guard. He's declining on that hill. But he's still, you know, all-star level point guard. Got D Book, you know, rising superstar in his league. After that, you got Aiden, who was a, a number one pick still in the room, man. He was drafted 2018, I think. So this is his third year. So he's not really fully developed yet. You know what I mean? So if you look at roster for roster, what the Suns have done this year, regardless of injury, is very impressive. Man. Like they, this is a very young team, minus Chris Paul and Jay Crowder. Everybody, I think pretty much everybody else that plays for this team is like five years or less in their career. Maybe That's some right. campaign. But like campaign, I think he might be up there too. He's not a vet. Like take Jay Crowder and Chris Paul off this team. Everybody else in there has very little playoff experience, very little playing time experience, and they're not even like solidified in who they are for real for yet. So like for them to push this run regardless, because like even with the Lakers, like you look at the Lakers, you still expect LeBron to pull it out and beat them. Then you look at the next round, like, oh, the Nuggets, we feel like they can beat them. We feel like the Nuggets can beat them. Even without Jamal Murray, it'll be hard, but we feel like MVP Joker can pull it off and beat them. They got swept. Next round, you got the Clippers. Everybody thought the Quad could probably come back. You know, he might come back at some point. The Clippers should be able to beat them. They didn't. But like, if you compare roster for roster, Clippers versus Suns, I'd probably say 80% of people would take the Clippers, just roster for roster. Roster for roster, you wouldn't? Without Kawhi Leonard? Roster for roster? Without Kawhi Leonard? The Suns had a full team. Chris Paul was hurt. If he played. I'm talking about even like beginning the series when Chris Paul was out. It was no Chris Paul and no Kawhi. Oh, yeah, roster. no Chris Paul. I probably would have – I would have gained to the Clippers. But you know he came saying? back. No, game one. Before game one started, Chris Paul was out and Kawhi was out. So you're looking at Suns without Chris Paul and you're looking at Clippers without Kawhi Leonard. I'm pretty sure most people would have took Clippers in that sense. In that instance. I would have. So I'm saying I say about 80% probably would have took the Clippers on that hand. So it's like then Chris Paul came back game three. <clears throat> at that point where it tilted and it's like, oh, the Suns are probably going to no. After they won the first two games, it's like, oh, okay, we can, they are pretty serious. So it's like looking at their run and what they had, that was very impressive for the roster that they had. For them to have no real, real playoff experience, every pretty much everybody on the team is like six years or less in their career. Like nobody expected that from them this year. So I get what you're saying with the Bucks, but it's like for the Suns to be where they are with what they have, that's very – and Monty Williams don't come back to this thing as a coach. Like, his story, if people don't know his story, he has a very, very uh, – I don't say impressive, but, like, a respectable story of, like, the things he fought through and battled to get back to where he is and uh, off the court, the situation he had and different things. Like, a lot of respect for Monty Williams. Like, the coaching that he's done this year has been very, very respectable and very impressive. So, what the Suns fought through – and overcame, especially with our expectations, maybe just our expectations, of, you know, would set that up. But I feel like the Sun, I'm not saying the Sun's role is, is more impressive, but it's like roster for roster scene where they still overcame. We still expected the Suns to lose pretty much every round. Like, oh, okay, LeBron can still carry them. Nope, got beat. Oh, the Nuggets, that's, ah, oh, got swept. Ah, oh, they, they got the Clippers. Ah, oh, the Clippers win that. Nope, they lost that too. 
Now they're in the finals. Most people, no, nah, I don't say most people, nobody expected them to even consider being in the playoffs this year, let alone being in the finals. We all thought Chris Paul was crazy for staying with the Suns, and he's just like, yo, why the Suns? They're not, that's a cute little story. Oh, he's finna right off his career, and he's just gonna be, you know, that Asian vet to kind of just aid along and bring up the young bucks. No, nah, he's trying to win too. So for him to be able to do that for this year, that's why he was my MVP. And that's why I feel like I'm not saying they had a harder role, but I respect their role maybe a little bit more than the Bucks. Because we've seen the Bucks do this again and again. Well, this is like their fourth year, I think, now, if this happened. Most for the most part, the same roster. And like once again, Bucks look good. They look like they can do something, it disappoints us. They look good like they could they can do something, disappoint us again. So it's just like I respect the Bucks and be honest what they did, but it's like when you look at where the Suns came from and how we view them, that's that's it's just different. I ain't trying to compare, but I say it's different. So that's that's a very respectable role of how they took it and how they come so far to be in the finals where they are now. So I mean, I'm impressed by that too, man. So um, that's it for me, man. So let's see how this final shapes out. But you got anything else? He top five for now. I ain't gonna say it no more. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I hope my boy can come back and do something, man. That's all I can say. I hope he come back and be the Greek freak. But other than that, um, that, is that it for this episode? Anything that you want to add? Sons and six, if Giannis can't come back and be himself. Sons and six. All right. Um, if he come back, that's Bucks and seven, like I said. But if not, then I'm right there with you. But that's it for part two of the B-Ball Jones podcast. And uh, thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for watching those that's on YouTube. And then uh, please like and subscribe and, and uh, follow us on wherever you listen to your podcast at. And uh, please, please comment, you know, let us know what you think. Give us your predictions. We, we open all that. We want to know what y'all think about that too. And uh, that's it, guys. We appreciate y'all listening. And uh, we out. Peace.